The Story of Bluebeard Once upon a time there was a very rich man who lived in a very beautiful mansion who had such a bright blue beard that all who knew him called him Bluebeard. Probably because of his uncommon beard and incredible wealth, this man was so very popular that he had been married several times. Yet it so happened that each one of his wives had mysteriously disappeared, and no one knew for certain what had happened to any of them. Near Bluebeard's house lived a poor widow who had four children, two grown sons who no longer lived at home, and two kind and lovely young daughters who were of marriageable age. And Bluebeard wanted to marry one of them, though he did not care which one. Unfortunately for Bluebeard, neither of the girls wanted to marry him at all, particularly since he had so many wives who had vanished so mysteriously. They were worried that if either one married him, she too might disappear. Because Bluebeard seemed to be such a polite man, they didn't want to give a simple no to his marriage proposals. Instead, they simply avoided saying yes. When Bluebeard entreated, Bess, who was the younger sister, would reply, I would not want to take away my sister's chance of marrying such a wealthy man as yourself. And her sister would respond in a similar fashion. This went on for quite a while, until finally Bluebeard decided to take action. He invited the sisters, their mother, and their friends to spend a week with him in his mansion, which they agreed to happily. The week at Bluebeard's proved to be splendid, and everyone truly enjoyed themselves. At the end of the week, Bess was won over by Bluebeard, and she decided that perhaps it would be a good thing to marry him. She finally said yes, and so it was that Bess married Bluebeard. About a month after the wedding, Bluebeard told his wife that he was going away on business for a few weeks. While I am gone, invite your family and friends and enjoy yourself. Here are the keys to all the rooms. You may use all the keys to unlock all the rooms, except for this little key. This is the key to the door at the end of the big corridor. That door you are forbidden to open. Then he said goodbye to Bess and left. Everyone came to visit, and each one had a wonderful time. But Bess could only think about that little key and what could possibly be behind the door. Finally, after a week's time, she could no longer control herself, and she opened the forbidden door. Bess could not believe her eyes. Inside the room stood all the previous wives of Bluebeard turned into stone statues. She stood there, shocked, staring in astonishment, and then, slamming the door behind her, she ran to her room, shaken and afraid, and trembling, she looked at the small key in her hand. That was when Bess saw a tiny stain of blood on the key. She was sure the stain was not there before. She tried to clean the key with her handkerchief. She tried to wash it with soap. She tried to polish it. Nothing worked. Bess soon realized that it was a magic key and that Bluebeard would know she had entered the room. When Bluebeard returned home two days later, he asked Bess for his keys. Hesitantly, she returned them hoping that Bluebeard would not notice the stain on the little key, but... What is this stain I see? Bluebeard roared. You have opened the forbidden door. Now you too will be turned into stone. Poor Bess began to cry and pleaded with Bluebeard to reconsider, but he would not change his mind. Then please, please give me some time to prepare myself, she begged. You have less than an hour, Bluebeard replied menacingly. Bess was hoping to gain time so that her brothers, who were now soldiers and who had promised to visit her on that very day, would arrive in time to save her. 
Unfortunately, the time passed much too swiftly, and as Bluebeard began the incantation, casting the magic spell that would turn his wife into stone, Bess fell to her knees and cried out in terror. Just then, her two brothers burst into the room. They grabbed Bluebeard, tied him up, and he was taken to the prison, never to be seen again. Bess inherited all of Bluebeard's fortune, and a year later she remarried, this time to a good and honest man who helped her forget that terrible adventure. She lived happily ever after, and never again felt the need to be curious about anything else. The End